naming binary ionic compounds. So we've, we've been talking about um, making the formulas, writing the formulas. Very important to understand that ionic compounds contain two ions. Don't get creative and try to make three or four ions. There's only two ions. One cation, one anion. Okay. The convention is that the cation is always listed first and the anion is listed second. It's convention. Just like the convention with writing formal invitations is it's Mr. and Mrs. Why? Because somebody started doing that way and everybody else followed and that's just how we do it, right? There's, there's no big reason behind it. It's always cation and then anion, which is another reason why I like metals as masculine and nonmetals as feminine because then the Mr. Mrs. thing makes sense too. So cations first. Um, to name these guys, what you have to do is you first have to identify the two ions. Separate them, write their charges. Now sometimes you need to figure out what the charge is. Um, if you've got a transition metal, one that needs a Roman numeral, you're not going to know what the charge is just by looking at the periodic table. And so then what you do is you have to figure it out by looking at the charge on the anion and looking at the ratio of those two ions in the formula unit. And we'll do some examples to show you how to do that. So once you've identified the two ions with their charges, then you write the name for the cation and then the name for the anion. And you're going to leave a space in between. It's a lot like people names, right? Except these are not proper names, so we're not going to capitalize them. But most people go by two names, a first name and a last name, and you leave a space in between because it's two words. Most chemical compounds have two names, a first name and a last name. First name is the cation for ionic compounds. Second name is the anion. Remember when you're naming those cations that the metals that are not in these groups, 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, silver, or cadmium, you have to include a Roman numeral in their name to specify the charge. Because otherwise, the person reading the name of the compound won't know which ion you're talking about. Iron makes two ions, plus two and plus three. The only way in the name that we can communicate that is with the Roman numeral. So we're going to name these compounds. Calcium and chlorine. So there's two elements, there's two ions, so the first element is Ca. No, oh, I didn't want that to be red. First element is Ca. The second element is Cl. Now this subscript refers to the number of those ions in this formula. That's not part of the anions formula. Okay, we're going to talk about the polyatomic ions later. What's the charge on a calcium ion? It's 2 plus. And what's the charge on a chloride ion? 1 minus. So there we have our two ions. Now to name the compound, we're first going to name this guy. What's the name of that? It's calcium. Does it need a Roman numeral? No, because it's in group 2. We know it's charged from the periodic table. And what's the name of this ion? Chloride. It comes from chlorine. We change the ending to chloride. Traditionally, a woman changes her last name, the ending of her name when she gets married, right? So this is a little bit like this guy, calcium, and this girl, chlorine, getting married. And it's Mr. and Mrs., and she changed the ending of her name. Did he change the ending of his name? No. So calcium chloride. Any questions? Do the next one. ZNO. What are the two elements in there? It's zinc and oxygen. What's the charge on the zinc ion? Two plus. How do you know that? It's on the periodic table. It's one that we've learned a little pattern. It's not in group 1A, 2A, 3A, but it's zinc. Zinc, silver, and cadmium, that little triangle there, we go aluminum, 
down a step zinc, down a step silver, zinc has a plus two charge. What's the charge on oxygen's ion? Two minus. Again, we get that from the periodic table. We can count backwards from the halogens. The halogens don't form ions, they're zeros. Minus one for column 7A, minus two for column 6A, and that's where oxygen is. So there we have our ion formulas, and now we're going to name the ions. What's the name of this guy? Yeah, it's going to be zinc, yeah, zinc oxide. Does zinc need a Roman numeral? No, it doesn't. Now, this is one where on a multiple choice quiz or test, they could try to trick you. I know what you mean by that, but it's wrong. You don't use Roman numerals on the guys that we don't need Roman numerals on. I think most students would prefer that we just use Roman numerals on everything, because then you wouldn't have to remember. But we don't, and, we, you know, that's the way some very smart people have decided to do it, and so we just have to go along. It's like you might decide that it would be better to drive on the left side of the road, but if you're living in Fresno, you're going to have trouble with that, right? No matter how personally convicted you are of that being the right thing to do. So we just can't use Roman numerals with certain metals. SNF. We've got S, N, and we've got F. What's the charge on an SN ion? Can we tell from the periodic table? We can't tell from the periodic table, but we can tell from the charge on this. What's the charge on the fluoride ion? Minus one. And this tells us there's one SN and two Fs. If you have to draw pictures, draw pictures. There's nothing wrong with drawing pictures. What usually happens is if you draw enough pictures at the beginning, then you can see them in your head without actually drawing them. So I'm drawing the ions that are in this formula unit. There's one SN and there's two Fs. Each F has a minus one charge. So I've got a total of minus two charge here. I do not know what this is because SN is not in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver, or cadmium. So if I have a total negative two charge, what must be the total positive charge? Two plus. That plus two charge is shared among how many ions? Just the one. So its charge must be two plus. That's how you figure out the charge on an ion that needs a Roman numeral. You have to look at the anion and its charge, and you have to look at how many are here and how many are there, and then you figure it out. So now we can erase this. We've got the two ions. What's the name of this ion? It's tin, but it's not tin four. It's tin two chloride. Fluoride, I'm sorry. I, I can't see the whole thing right now. Fluoride, thank you. Roman numeral two because it has a plus two charge. Any questions? The eights will be polyatomic ions, yes, with oxygen. None of these are polyatomic, and so the endings are all going to be eyed. I don't know if this, this just popped into my head. I'd rather be alone. Here's, here's fluorine alone, as opposed to being super glued to oxygen or something. I'd rather be alone. Ide is when it's just a single element. Fluoride, chloride, bromide, nitride, phosphide, oxide, all those guys. MN3P2. 
Now let's write the, the element symbols here. We've got MN and we've got P. Can we figure out the charge on MN from the periodic table? No. So well, then we're just going to skip him and we're going to go to phosphorus. Do we know the charge of phosphorus from the periodic table? Yeah, it's 3 minus. So how do we figure out the charge in the manganese? It's going to be 2 plus. But let's draw pictures. So this is telling us there's three manganese ions. So I drew three manganese. And there's two phosphides. And so I drew two of those. And then we're going to look at overall charges. This is going to be minus 6. Minus 3 and minus 3 is minus 6. And so this must be plus 6. I've got a positive 6 charge, and that charge has to be shared equally between all three of those. That's 6 divided by 3, so these guys must be 2 plus. Again, until you start being able to see this, until it starts making sense, draw pictures. Draw it all out so that you can see what's going on then it will begin to make sense. Otherwise, it's just some weird voodoo game that we're playing. So this manganese 2 plus. Oh, let's get it all erase our scribblings. So MN is manganese. And manganese needs a Roman numeral. And what should the Roman numeral be? Okay, there's a common error that students make. There's a 3 after the manganese, and so a lot of students will write manganese 3. The Roman numeral is not the number of ions. It's the charge on the ion. That's why we have to look at the formula for each ion and figure out the charge. It's manganese 2 plus, so it's manganese 2. It's not magnesium and it's not that mythical element, manganesium, right? And those could show up as foils on a multiple choice exam. Um, and then this guy, what's his name? Phosphide. Phosphorus and sulfur have this on again, off again relationship with the or part of their name. You might think, well, it should be phosphoride. Well, no. We get, we get rid of the or and the us for phosphorus. Um, and then sometimes it comes back and other times it doesn't. And so it's a little confusing. But that's one of those things that I would not try to trick a student on. I wouldn't put phosphoride and phosphide and expect you to get the right one. I, you know, if you write phosphoride, I'll go, hmm, and cute little cross off the or. It's like when my um, second son was about two and we were at a restaurant and he kept pointing over to the cashier and talking about the dollar biller. The dollar biller, the dollar biller. He meant the cash register. It was really cute. We knew what he meant, but it was silly, right? Phosphoride is silly, like the dollar biller. I know what you mean, but try not to do that. <clears throat> Any questions? Two ions, a name for each. When we're writing formulas, again, we need the formulas for the ions. We need the formulas for the ions with their charges, and then we're going to use the charges, like we learned at the beginning of this lecture, to determine how many are, of each are in there. And so since we've already done a lot of this um, Writing formulas of ions, I'm not going to do a ton of examples here, but let's look at aluminum sulfide. Two words, aluminum and sulfide. Aluminum is one ion, sulfide is the other ion, and so we need to write the formulas. So aluminum is Al. What's the charge on aluminum ion? It's 3 plus because it's in group 3A. Sulfide is S, and what's the charge? 2 minus. So now we've got that, then we have to put them together. So if we do crisscross, we end up with Al2 
S3. And that's the formula for aluminum sulfide. So you write the formula for each ion with the charge, and then you use the charges to figure out how to put them together. Any questions?